I'm Eric Novak and coming up I'm going to take a look at the all-new 2016 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. When it comes to hybrid vehicles, there's no more dominant automaker than Toyota. Since they sold their very first Toyota Prius back in 1997, they've sold more than 8 million hybrid vehicles worldwide as of July 2015. They also sell a lot of compact SUVs in their Toyota RAV4. Uh, in 2015, the RAV4 was actually the 10th most uh, sold vehicle worldwide, selling more than 665,000 units. It's their second most popular vehicle in the entire Toyota lineup. The combination of taking a compact SUV with a hybrid powertrain seemed all too appealing for Toyota, hence the launch of the all-new 2016 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. I have one with me today. We're going to take a look at it and see how this brand new addition to the Toyota Hybrid lineup stacks up against the rest. One of the common critiques of hybrid vehicles is that you've got to sacrifice, you've got to give up something. And one of those most commonly picked on areas is cargo space. Now, Toyota has always used for their batteries nickel metal hydride. They still do that, despite the, uh, the popularity of lithium ion and lithium polymer elsewhere. One of the disadvantages, in my mind, of nickel metal hydride is it's larger. These battery spaces are larger. And in a lot of the, uh, the Toyota uh, sedans and Lexus sedans that are hybrid powertrains, you see a noticeable drop in terms of cargo space. Fortunately, though, I think with the case in the RAV4 hybrid, they've really figured out a better placement all you see is a slight reduction uh, slight reduction with cargo space where the battery is placed behind the second row in fact you only lose about uh, two cubic feet or so with the additional hybrid powertrain uh, being put here with the battery there's about 35.6 cubic feet of cargo space behind the second row which is more than enough that anyone who might be considering a vehicle of this type would have use for you could certainly fit enough weeks worth of groceries in here or golf clubs or maybe even a couple of hockey bags. So really a good uh, surprise in my mind in seeing how little we've lost in terms of cargo capacity with this hybrid powertrain. So inside this new RAV4 hybrid, uh, it's not a bad interior actually. Uh, RAV4s in the past have tended to be rather blasé and, and uh, uninspiring, but uh, with the two-tone colors here as well, it's not too bad on this limited trip. The, uh, the uh, center uh, LED information system here covers uh, your, your uh, navigation, uh, you get efficiency uh, ratings with your hybrid driving, EV driving. Uh, the driver instrument cluster in front of me is, is pretty good, it's clear, it's concise. Uh, Toyota is a big one with buttons, I like um, the uh, tactile feel that comes with buttons for climate and for other controls. Uh, transmission is uh, you know situated relatively well. Two cup holders, not too bad. I mean, again, it's not a bad interior overall inside this new uh, limited edition of the uh, RAV4 Hybrid. Step inside the second row of the RAV4 Hybrid, what do you get? Well, not too bad. Uh, 37 inches of uh, second row legroom is what you get back here. And certainly plenty enough headspace. It's actually not bad considering this is a compact crossover. So any adults in here would probably feel quite comfortable inside. Uh, no difficulties for me uh, or critiques on this part. It's often said by critics of hybrids that for better 
fuel economy, you need to give up on performance. Well, with this uh, RAV4 hybrid powertrain, you're actually getting more horsepower than you do in the regular. There's 194 net horsepower offered with this RAV4, and uh, you know, you're not going to be setting any speed records here, but I don't think that's the point. You get more than enough uh, horsepower to meet your needs with this vehicle. I mean, you're not really going to be towing much either. It's not a big tow rating on this. So uh, by and large, this is a fine driving vehicle. CVT transmission, which I can know some people really dislike, but overall, uh, you know, considering you're getting far better fuel efficiency, the trade-off in driving this Rav4 really isn't that bad at all. So oil prices may be low, gas prices may be low as a result, and we might be seeing a slight uptick in the overall sale of larger, big vehicles once again. But the truth remains that all automakers know this, the future lies in diversified, more fuel efficient powertrains overall. Toyota has been the dominant global player in hybrid vehicles for many years, and to continue to do so, they've got to broaden the spectrum of offerings that they have. By launching the 2016 RAV4 Hybrid, what they've done is taken their immensely popular compact SUV and offered a more fuel efficient powertrain option that actually doesn't sacrifice anything. You get more horsepower and I'm actually quite pleased with the fact that they managed to keep overall cargo space barely below what it is in the regular powertrain option. I think if you're looking for a uh, hybrid vehicle with a little more cargo space than a typical sedan might offer, you certainly might want to give this 2016 RAV4 Hybrid a shot. That's it for this review for EnviroDad.com. I'm Eric Novak. Thanks for watching. If you like this review, we've got more of them, both written and video, at www.envirodad.com. There's also a Facebook page for you to like, and you know what? We're even doing Twitter as well.